Hello everybody, this is Brad Dyke reaching out to you and touching base with you on some pretty neat things. I've gotten some discussions that have gone back and forth in regards to working with something that's really cool. And that is, how do you channel bus disc arrays so that you can get the maximum performance from your, your basic channels that exist on your disc arrays? So a lot of people ask that question. They said, yeah, you know, I got the disc array. I packed it full of stuff. I set up giant array groups. And, um, you know, something's just not quite right. It, I, I expected more of that kind of mindset. So with this video, I'm going to explain to you how can you truly tweak out the nature of your discs in regards to what we call channel busing. And what that is basically is channel busing is the separation of data pathways that disk arrays have on board. You see, when a SAS disk or a fiber channel disk or a DAS interface, not a NAS, don't confuse network access storage with direct attached storage because that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about uh, SAS connections, we're talking about fiber channel connections and how you can basically uh, understand the maximum effectiveness of configuring your disk arrays in a way so that they are going to be able to perform. Well, the secret here is if you look at your disk arrays, you'll notice that you have what appear to be dividers right here, and there's another one down here. And this is a three channel bus one, two, and three. Up here, we have something similar but this is a physical server unlike a disk array channel bit bus this is a physical server this is a DX series 710 uh, D, uh, Dell uh, R series server for power edge and it's a very powerful server but it also has as you notice three apparently set different sets of bays now down here you'll notice this is a fiber channel array which is in a nutshell nothing like the SAS environment. If you look inside there you'll see the SAS connector and it can do SATA or SAS and it can also do SSD and then if you look down here you'll see in the back something very similar to what we used to call a SCSI 380 pin and it's in the back area. This is a fiber channel interface connection that Dell EMC chassis that this particular unit is um, represents but it also does have apparently three different channels. Now, the secret to this process is pretty easy. One, understand that your cabling breaks up the bandwidth in batches of three. And these batches of three correlate to the nature of how the data cycle is right. So if you built a RAID group that consists of all the bays to the very end with maybe two spare disks, well, that's okay, but now you are riding across multiple channel buses for a single write cycle. That's not optimal. What is optimal is if you are working in an environment, for instance, like here, and you had at least two disks or more, try to build your RAID groups within the channel. And this does truly make a difference. It also means that you can mix. You can have SAS here in this channel, SATA here, and you can have SSD here. Now the performance impacts aren't dramatic, but they're, they're sufficient. You're gonna notice the difference between having a fewer set of RAID groups opposed to one giant RAID group that may span one or two or even three disk arrays. And you're saying, what the heck is happening here? Why is it taking so long? Well, that's because not only are you transitioning through the interfaces of these disk arrays, you're actually also transitioning across multiple channels. So, be pragmatic. Number one, it's okay to have a larger drive in your setup, but fewer. So let's say, for instance, you have two gig or three, I'm sorry, two terabyte or three terabyte drives, opposed to 500 or 900 gig hard drives. Get the larger capacity, set them into RAID 1 or RAID, limited RAID 5, RAID 6 combination if you like, but they'll work just fine inside the channel. The bandwidth is very substantial and it's stable. That's important. When you cross multiple channel, path, uh, multiple channel pathways, you actually do 
have some hesitation effect that happens because it has to coordinate the way it writes. Now, one very important detail. This is a fiber channel array, which means it's useless. Don't buy fiber channel disk arrays for any reason if you're going to attempt to connect them to a server. Fiber channel doesn't work that way. The last time Fiber Channel directly attached to a server was a Teradata server, and that was back in 1995-1996. All Fiber Channel storage arrays connect to what we call uh, head controllers, or for instance, a CX3 series EMC Dell uh, controller interface, which is almost as big as a server, and then it connects to a Fabric Channel network. That fi Fiber Channel network um, is a fabric, basically, and that fabric is then connected to multiple servers that use that secure format of computing to get their storage requirements through a secure network. So fiber channel is really not a good solution, but it does follow the same pathways of channeling as you see here, up with a, with a SAS or a mini SAS, direct attached footprint, or like you can see in an actual server that's actually doing the local tra uh, storage traffic on this chassis. Now that leads us to one other type of, of channel busing. And that is way down here at the bottom. Now this used to be a uh, 4700 series Isilon platform. And it is basically what we call a multiple pathway multi-set channeled platform. So there are three sets of these here. One here in set of three going across 12. Another set here, which is another set for 12. And then there's another one on the back end of this chassis that does the same amount. So that basically means that I have two channels per feed, two channels per, free, per feed, and on the back the same thing. So that means I've got three SAS connections going on here, uh, opposed to what we would call a redundant single SAS pathway. Now, this, you would think, would give you more firepower uh, because of the multiple SAS cable connections, but in actuality, it doesn't. It actually is kind of slower. It's an older type of communication, which is called parity set busing, and that basically allows these two buses to go, continuously go back and forth with each other, so there's not a great advantage of basically setting up disks on a single side channel uh, because it actually is in a numerical sequence. So the numer numerical sequence is a very common issue way back in the early uh, early 2000s where they were focusing strictly on the actual drive slot, not necessarily the teaming of disks. So this is an older generational type of uh, SAS connection. It's not bad, not at all. And it goes it's back in the series of the uh, 9200s. Uh, the Intel Series 9200s, and they're not at all bad disks. They, they're quite capable and they're very functional. It's just the advantage is driven on between 1 to 12, and that, you know, you can't really tweak that out. Unlike where you can do it here, I can set up four disks here, four disks here, four disks there, and I'm performing really well. Um, I can put a couple extra on each set for growth, and I'm really getting all the maximum bandwidth I can out of these channels through the SAS interface. So, like I said, three major tips. One, learn your disk array and get a good disk array. The, the NetApp Series DS are great. Um, they also have the 3PAR, which is decent. You have the HPs, not so great, but they still work. Not so great on the Dell stuff. Stay away from fiber channel. It, you can't use it. It's not there for you to use. And it's a terrible waste of hard drive capacity. Second thing, go with bigger disks and fewer of them because you'll get a better return. And work within your channel busing for those groupings. By doing that, you're going to get a much greater return and you'll be, you'll be pleased with what you've got. And lastly, understand the nature of the fact that direct attached storage is different than all other forms of storage. And yes, the SAS and the fiber channel are very similar, except the fiber channel requires highly proprietary based hardware between it and its final host users, unlike the SAS, which is a direct connect via by controller in your server. Get what you need that fits your needs.
this guy really is a great, 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 awesome thing. Down here on the 5600, it was great for me to recycle old three and a half inch discs that I had that had some capacity to them. I use this once or twice a year as my maximum archiver, and it's true NAS. Works pretty good, but you do need to keep it booting it up periodically and, and refreshing it. If it gets too far out, it kind of goes south on you. So that's just a fast heads up. But anyways, this is just a real quick tips and tricks about working and building storage disks arrays. I'm going to do a little, a little bit more specialized video on this guy because this is a piece of garbage in my opinion. Always was. It was one of the reasons why I stepped away from EMC technology because EMC was about basically uh, making you buy more disks for no reason. All right, guys. Well, I hope this has helped out some. Um, as you can see, I'm sitting on the floor because all my disc capacity is low on the ground to take full advantage of the cold air and uh, give you the ability of uh, kind of seeing up close what these things look like and um, what you can do with them. Um, the other question that came up was, geez, you have so many disc platforms. Can you, do, do you use them all at once or do you use them all? And the answer is yes and no. I do use them. Uh, matter of fact, I have uh, one of my DS NetApp arrays here up and running right now, along with a paired uh, DX710, which is running, and th those are crucial machines to my daily use. And the other ones I bring up in test mode and comparison mode, or I want to do, or I want to do a production of video, or something like that, uh, just to bring these to the table because I can share that information with you, and it won't cost you any money. So with that being the case, um, I just wanted you to have a good look at that. Now let me show you my two latest and greatest little toys that I've gotten here. Okay, so here we have a, a TKX series uh, fiber channel disc array, 15 discs. And as you can see, it runs in either 2 gigabit fiber channel or 4 gigabit fiber channel. And then over here, I have another EMC platform that which is not basically a fiber channel. It's SAS. And it is also a EMC product. It's got the EMC bevel on it, but it's of the EMC generational opposed to the Dell generational. So let me show you this a little up close. So here is an SSD chassis. Um, if you pull the uh, tra tray bay out, you'll see that it actually speaks to the nature of uh, SSD. If I can get it to focus, that is. Focus. And you focus. Yeah, there you go. SSD 800 capacity. So, with that, you will also notice that it has a channel bus on it. That's right. There it is. One, two, and three. So this platform is very much like my DS platform, and they are channeled. You know, with 24 discs. And then over here is a fiber channel array, and this thing is oh, this is the thing that made me walk away from EMC. But I'll do that in a different video. Uh, but I just wanted to show you these two new toys. And I will be doing stuff on them for you. And uh, you'll see more about it down the road. God bless and take care.